wow, you weren't kidding around with all these articles you know on social dynamics and friendship. You've practically given us a crash course in human connection. It's an excellent collection, and it really speaks to your desire to not just socialize better, but to truly understand the why behind it all, the psychology of how those connections actually form. Right. It's like everyone's playing this game with a secret rule book, yeah. and we're finally getting our hands on a copy. Yeah. And speaking of rules, several sources talk about social dynamics as these invisible forces that shape how groups interact. Uh-huh. Kind of like how there's always that cool kids table in the cafeteria. That's a great analogy. Uh. When you understand these dynamics, you know, who holds influence, how information flows, you become a more savvy player in the game. Instead of just reacting, you're making informed choices about how you navigate those social situations. Okay. That makes total sense. Knowledge is power, as they say. And speaking of skills, active listening came up a lot. You know, not just hearing what someone's saying, but really showing your engage. Absolutely. And your sources nailed it. Active listening is like rocket fuel for connection. Think about it. Haven't you ever noticed how good it feels when someone asks you questions that show they're truly interested in what you had to say? That's active listening in action. It shifts you from passive listener to someone who genuinely wants to connect. And that's incredibly attractive. Totally. It's like when someone's super into like their stamp collection. Yeah. And instead of a half-hearted, that's nice, you're all, what's your rarest stamp? You're making them feel heard. <laughs> and who doesn't love that? Yeah, exactly. And that leads to something else your sources mentioned, um, dealing with social anxiety. Even with the best skills, mm. sometimes just the thought of walking into a room full of strangers can be terrifying. Ugh, tell me about it. I used to get those pre-party jitters all the time. The sources had some good tips, though, like prepping conversation starters beforehand right. so you don't draw a blank. Right, and starting <laughs> small, using into larger groups by chatting with one or two people first. But what I found fascinating was this emphasis on self-care. They made a really strong point about how the better you feel about yourself, the easier it becomes to put yourself out there socially. You know you can't pour from an empty cup. Okay, that is such a good point. Love that analogy. So we're feeling good about ourselves. We've got our active listening game on point. What's next? All right, so we're feeling good. We've got our active listening game on point. What's next? It feels like we're ready to level up. Let's talk about turning those hellos into actual conversations. You're ready for Conversation Mastery 101. And... Your sources had some really insightful points here, particularly about tapping into something deeply human, you know, our desire to share our passions. It sounds simple, but think about it. When someone asks you about something you're genuinely interested in, how much easier is it to talk to them? Oh, it's true. Suddenly you're not struggling for things to say you're excited to share. Instead of defaulting to crazy weather, huh? Which guilty as charged I've done way too often. You're asking, what's your favorite thing about a sunny day? It's like giving them permission to light up and share what brings them joy. Exactly. And that shift from small talk to genuine sharing, that's where those deeper connections start to form. Your source has also delved into body language, which, let's be honest, can feel like a whole other language sometimes. Oh, tell me about it. Sometimes I feel like I need a translator to decode what people are really saying with those crossed arms and sideways glances. We'll consider your sources your decoder ring. They provided a great cheat sheet for reading those nonverbal cues. Like crossed arms can signal defensiveness while genuine smiles, those ones that crinkle the eyes, usually mean someone's at ease. But, as one of your articles wisely pointed out, don't get too caught up in analyzing every twitch and blink. Sometimes a nervous laugh is just that. Nerves, not a sign that they secretly hate your guts. Right, let's not turn into those overanalyzing meme people. Now, speaking of decoding, a lot of your sources focused on online interaction, which makes sense. It's how we connect these days. But one thing that stood out was this emphasis on taking those digital friendships offline. It's like that old saying, you can't hug someone through the internet. There's a limit to how much true connection you can build through a screen. Shared experiences, whether it's grabbing coffee, going to a concert, or even just awkwardly standing in line together for that viral donut shop, those shared moments create a different kind of bond. It reminds me of how in ancient civilizations, shared rituals and feasts weren't just about the activity itself, they were about strengthening social ties. Okay, I totally see that. It's about creating a shared history, even if it's just over some slightly overpriced donuts. So we're building those real life connections, slightly sugared donuts or not, but how do we actually nurture those relationships and turn them into something lasting? We've talked about skills, but what about finding people we actually click with? That's where it gets really interesting. Your sources talk about like the power of finding your tribe, 
yeah. you know, those folks who get your quirky sense of humor yeah. or share your passion for, say, competitive indoor gardening, no judgment here. Hey, whatever floats your boat <laughs> or uh, sprouts your seeds, mm. right? But seriously, I love that idea of finding your people. One article even called it friendship alchemy, which sounds way more magical than just you know, hanging out. It is kind of magical when you find those people you truly connect with. And it speaks to a deeper human need, mm. belonging. We're wired to seek out others who share our values, interests, and passions. It's how we thrive. It's true. It's like that feeling of walking into a room where you just know you're among your people. But what about when those people are scattered across the country or even the globe? A bunch of the articles you share talked about the challenges of long distance friendships. It definitely takes effort, but as your sources highlighted, it's so worth it to nurture those connections. Especially in our digital age where it's easy to fire off a quick text, a handwritten letter carries so much weight. Or how about sending a postcard from a place you know they'd love? It's about being intentional, showing your friends that you value them enough to go the extra mile. Okay, I am so stealing that postcard idea. That's brilliant. But here's the flip side. What about those friendships that feel a bit off-balance? dash You know, where you're always the one reaching out, making plans, putting in all the effort. Ah, the dreaded one-sided friendship. You it's tough, it. but your sources were pretty clear. Recognizing those relationships and setting boundaries is crucial. It's not about being selfish. It's about self-respect. You deserve to be in relationships, friendships included, where your efforts are reciprocated, where you feel valued and appreciated. Yes. One article put it perfectly. Sometimes you have to love yourself enough to walk away from what's no longer serving you. And that can be hard, but ultimately it opens up space for healthier, more fulfilling connections, which when you think about it, is what this whole deep dive has been about. It really has. We've explored the skills, the psychology, and even the art of building and maintaining meaningful relationships. Remember, you are not just a passive participant in this whole social game. You're the architect of your own social life. So well said. This deep dive has given you a whole toolkit from active listening to decoding body language mm. to finding your tribe. Now it's about using those tools to build the kind of social life that truly lights you up. And remember, building meaningful connections is a journey, not a destination. There will be bumps along the way, but that's all part of the adventure. Couldn't agree more. So go forth and socialize with confidence, knowing that you've got this. And hey, if you ever need a reminder of these awesome tips, you know where to find us.